my grandma is the kindest person you'll ever meet and that's the biggest care respect I got from her. Like she's a kind person. Like there's not one person in this world that has anything bad to say about my grandma just because of how kind she is to everybody else and how she puts everyone else first. What was her role in your life and what what did she stress? Oh, she means everything to me. Um, she really taught me about hard work and dedication to something. You know, she devoted, you know, 44 years of her life to driving kids to school every day and taking them home. So, um, you know, if you can't take anything from that, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that I, I always think about, you know, um, no matter what she did, she always put, you know, everyone else first. School wasn't an easy thing for you at no. first. It, no. I, uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I really put, you know, everything else first for, for a long time. Just like a lot of kids do, you know, you really don't understand how important school is. Um, but, you know, I, I, I had to lock down um, my senior year. You know, I, had, I didn't have a good uh, GPA coming out of uh, high school, so I had to actually take online classes to get my, my GPA up to be able to enroll into Cincinnati to take that scholarship. Uh, what, what was it? Where were you sitting? I was sitting at a 1.8 at the beginning of my senior year. Yeah. And I had to get a, a good grade on ACT and then take extra classes to um, replace my, uh, some of my bad grades I got uh, throughout the years in, in high school. So it was just a matter of not applying yourself, it wasn't yeah, any kind that's of... that's really what it was, you know. I was a um, three-sport athlete, uh, football, basketball, through shot put, and uh, I really, you know, just liked being a kid and I really didn't apply myself as much as I should have, but uh, it all changed when I went to college. You know, I um, told my grandma before I left I, you know, I, I was going to graduate from, from college, and that's, that's something I had to do. When you worked in the detention center, mm -hmm. and what was it like, and what was the what? What did you take out of it from the experience? Would you work for one year? Well, yeah, well, I worked probably about half a year because uh, I um, shadowed uh, the people there for for school, um, and then I did an interview during my uh, summer going into my senior season, and uh, they uh, they hired me on the staff, and I worked uh, throughout my uh, senior football season. And what, what time would you work? I mean, during football season, you, yeah. how did you ever have time to do anything? So, um, I'd probably work like two or three days during the week. Um, and I would go in, we get out of practice about, uh, everything's done about six. So I'd, I'd go to work about 7.30 and, and get out about one. And then I'd wake up, you know, do it all over again. Um, and then Sundays I'd work like a full day. Yeah. And what did you do there? Uh, I was in charge of, um, 50 residents in a pod, and I just, um, you know, look over them, make sure everything's going uh, good between them. Was it what, minimum security or? It, it, was, it was minimum. It wasn't, I mean, uh, after a while they started to get, you know, more serious offenses there or uh, serious crimes there, but uh, it was, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Like, I, I don't want to give uh, River City a bad name because it was it was a good place. It was, it was, a, it was a place where, you know, uh, I remember one of the, the people that were there, they said, if you can change the lives of, of one out of 10 people that, that come through those doors, then you've done your job, you know, because it, it's, it's tough, especially when people go back to the same situations that they, they just left. It's, it's hard for them. So if you can change one out of 10 lives. Obviously, you're not a guard anymore, but do mm -hmm. you do stuff for corrections facilities at all? Um, I haven't in a while, but um, actually, um, if you've heard of Boys Village, I, I work down at Boys Village sometime just uh, helping out with the kids. Um, if it's going out and playing basketball with them or just, you know, doing something just to hang out with them, socialize with them, uh, Boys Village is um, it's like a, a, almost like a juvie, but it's, it's less than juvie. It's like a, like a detention center kind of for boys. Um, it's in Worcester, Ohio. Yeah. And um, I, I'll go and donate my time there. Yeah. Well, how did fatherhood change you? Oh, it changed everything. Um, it's one of those things you can you can't explain until you've actually been through it. You can't really grasp the, the concept. Um, you know, I never really pictured myself. Well, I mean, I pictured myself having kids eventually, but after I had him, you know, um, I never could picture life without him. Now, you know. Yeah. You just seem to be a guy that you know you you proved yourself. You've gone through it, and and you've kind of shut a lot of people up. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you you know use that as fire. To, um, Burn your burn everything, but um, it's really I don't try to think about it too much because you know people have their own opinion. They're gonna think whatever they want to think, but I can just go out and, and do what I do. Um, from day one, I wanted to come in and make a statement, you know, and it's always been my goal. Like I've, I'm never satisfied, you know. Even after I signed my second deal, like there's so much more to prove, you know. I, um, you know, not, not expected from me, you know. They 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 were, they were um, uh, grateful enough to uh, actually give me the contract and everything. So it was one of those. I have to go out and you know prove my worth now.
You seem to prove it off the field too with with some of the younger guys. Uh, did you learn that from Mataba? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Big Rube was one of those guys that you could talk to about anything, um, anything about a play, anything about personal life, just anything you got to get off your chest, he would be over there, uh, be there for you. And I, I try to be the same kind of guy to um, all the young guys we have here. So what was it like getting that belt the other day? <laughs> Belt's pretty flashy. No, nah, it, it, was, it was an honor, man, just to you know my, uh, my coaches. Uh, they thought so much of me to, um, to give me that, and uh, they thought like, I had a good game. What is the uh, – who gives it to you? Who presents it? So um, – Coach O'Neal uh, presents it, and it's for the person that um, play like a Brown. So we uh, we get dog tags for um, playing like a Brown. You know, being accountable, being um, relentless, being you know passionate about the game. Just certain things that we have that are on our um, our list of playing like a Brown. And um, uh, whoever did that the most throughout the game gets gets the belt for the week. And, and is there a present? So he presents it. Is it after the game? Or is it